So knowing the scripture and the truth in the scripture is very important when you use science or psychology theology in serving these people many times we need some experience in counseling in order to deal with the lost sheep but the theory of counseling or psychology if not actually mixed in the right way with the truth in the scripture and we checked everything again in the truth of the scripture then actually it can have negative effect let me give an example all religions in the world speak about prayer Christianity and other religions but what is the main difference between prayer in Christianity and prayer in other religions so maybe you go to a non-Christian counselor and he will tell you pray in order to be healed so prayer for them is just a tool for healing but in the scripture, prayer is not only a tool for healing, but prayer is union and oneness with God. You will be one with him. You will abide in him and he will abide in you. And what a big difference to understand prayer just as a tool for healing medicine so if you feel that you don't need healing then you will not pray but when you understand the prayer as union with God then actually you know that if you don't pray you are alienated from God and once you are alienated from God you're dead your understanding will darkened as St. Paul said and in using science like psychology or counseling with the scripture anything actually contradict the teaching of the scripture we should actually drop it only what actually matches and fits with the truth in the scripture. So, how you will have influence, how you will be trustworthy for this, for, for the source sheep to trust you, number one, to be grounded in the scripture. Number two, to have the eternal perception in your ministry. What do I mean by this? Think about the story of the rich man and Lazarus. This story actually, if ended by death of both of them, is a very sad story there is unfairness and many questions that we hear it from the lost sheep today why God allow suffering why God allow evil if he is Pantocrator in control why he did not eliminate evil completely is there a good father see his children suffering and just does nothing about it but when you look at the end of the story the eternal part 
then the story actually will make a perfect sense now. Many times when we look at our life here and now, we struggle and we stumble. But when we look at our life here as the first page in our life, because our life is not only in earth, but also there is a long part in eternity. This actually will, will make our ministry full of hope. That's why keeping the eternal perspective in this ministry will give hope. What do I mean? The thief on the cross, he was dying. What gave him this repentance when he said, remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom? It is the eternal perspective. This gives him hope. If the thief did not believe in eternity, then he wouldn't have any hope. He would not pray and ask, remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom. In our application, if somebody lived in immorality, and then he was diagnosed with AIDS and is dying. If there is no hope about eternal life, about forgiveness, then actually he will fall in depression and hopelessness. But this eternal element will give hope to the lost sheep. Sometimes when the lost sheep decide to return to God, one of the obstacles is the hopelessness. Would God accept me? I'm sure most of us heard this. Would God accept me if I return back to him? I think his situation is well expressed in Psalm 42. Verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. So, I know that God will help me. That is the hope I should actually install in the heart of the lost sheep. God will help you. God will empower you. Put your trust in God. Hope in God. And you shall praise him, praise him for the help of his countenance. God will help you. Also, it's written about God in Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. So many times people lose their faith in God after a big tragedy in their life. Loss of loved one, uh, diagnosed with terminal disease. So these people are broken in their hearts. When they are broken in their hearts, here eternal dimension, and believing in God, will give them this hope. God is near to those who have a broken heart. He's near to you. That's his promises. And save such as have a contrite spirit. The third element, so the first element will found it or will ground it 
in the scripture number two keeping the eternal dimension number three we are led by the Holy Spirit what do I mean every human being is a soul and a spirit some people are led by the needs and the desires of the flesh other peoples are led by their mind the first group we call them carnal people the second group Saint Paul called them the natural man in first Corinthians chapter 2 so the carnal man is led by the flesh the desire of the flesh the natural man is led by his mind but we should be led by the Holy Spirit so actually the believer should have the Holy Spirit leads his mind and the mind control his flesh this is the right hierarchy if I'm led only by my mind not by the Holy Spirit and I am addict I will say I am addict I am addict and I think it is difficult to overcome addiction many times in visitation somebody tell me I cannot quit smoking I have been smoking since I was 14 years old so now I'm smoking for 35 years I don't think I can quit smoking I'm addict that's what his mind is telling him if I am led by the Holy Spirit I will say I am a son of God and I'm fighting the sin of addiction I am fighting and I continue to fight big difference between labeling myself as an addict or seeing myself as son of God even in the midst of sin if I see myself as a son of God then I am fighting and I will continue to fight through the Holy Spirit this sin this sin is anymore this sin is a stranger to me I received the Holy Spirit I'm temple of God but I am fighting this sin how the lost sheep perceive himself as an addict or as the son of God fighting sin of addiction big difference the first description he say I'm an addict I have no hope I have no confidence that I can quit this sin but the second description he says himself, truly I am the son of God I am created in his likeness and in his image yes this likeness now is defiled by sin but he granted me all what I need to live godly life yes it is possible to be renewed again through repentance through accepting the forgiveness from God through communion through confession through the spiritual maturity no one is is without sin as St. John said if we said we are without sin we deceive ourselves and there is no truth in us first John 1 8 but yes 
no one is without sin that is the first half but the second half as he said in uh, St. Paul said in Roman uh, 6 11 count yourself dead for sin but alive for Christ alive for God by Christ Jesus our Lord so the first half no one is without sin but the second half count yourself dead to sin but alive to God by Jesus Christ that's why St. Paul said walk in the spirit Walk in spirit and don't fulfill the desire of the flesh. Galatians 5.16 The problem actually when we give the upper hand to the flesh or to the mind we will actually struggle. Because my mind is limited. My mind cannot understand or comprehend how the Lord Jesus Christ is born from a virgin. My mind cannot comprehend how the bread and wine change into the body and the blood. And believe me, many denominations, they changed the truth in the scripture to fit their mind because my mind cannot accept how this bread and wine change into body and blood so he said no it's a symbol so here the upper hand is to my mind and when the upper hand is for the flesh then actually we will fulfill all the desires of the flesh I will fall in sexual immorality. The, my body will not be disciplined. But St. Paul said, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest after I preach to others, I myself be rejected. And again, how to walk in the Spirit? You need to have your understanding is enlightened. And you cannot have your understanding enlightened without walking in the Spirit. Because this knowledge of Christ, walking in the Spirit, will enlighten your understanding. And then you will know what's right and what's wrong. You will never say it, what's wrong is right. As we read in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling so I cannot understand this hope unless my understanding is enlightened and my understanding will be enlightened when I walk in the spirit to know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints also in conclusions Colossians chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10 St. Paul says As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk on him as you received him walk on him root it and build up in him and establish in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving Beware, and this is actually the problem of some lost sheep, atheism and agnostic. Beware lest anyone cheat you, cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. For in him and Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. You are complete in him who is the head of all principality 
and power. When we walk with the Spirit, our understanding will be enlightened. And when our understanding will be enlightened, nobody will cheat us through philosophy or empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. Thank you.